All right, welcome to Choir Talks. Thanks for joining me today. In our digital society, in social media and the way that we relate to our digital society, we are often caught trying to present ourselves in such a way that other people will value maybe what we say or what we represent or who we are. But the Bible has a different take on what we should value, who we should value. So let's look at that together. We're going to look at Philippians chapter 2. This week I'm reading through some of the epistles because at Ridgecrest we are going through Acts uh, together in a sermon series. And so I wanted to see what the Apostle Paul had to say to the people who lived through Acts in the beginning of the church. As he wrote to them, what was he telling those new believers? And a theme that really struck me was that he writes a lot about unity. And so I turned here to Philippians chapter 2 because he speaks really directly to that. And uh, so let me read some of that scripture with you. Verse 1, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. He's directly hitting them uh, about their unity and about their oneness together. And that makes total sense. It was Jesus's concern also. Jesus told his disciples that people would know that they were his disciples because they had love for one another. John, that beloved disciple of Jesus, later in life wrote the, the epistle of 1 John in which he says that if we say we love God but we don't love each other, then we are liars. So unity was important from the time, uh, from, from Jesus as he spoke about it through Paul. Paul, as he writes to these uh, churches, um, often addresses unity and in the book of Philippians it's obvious that that's one of his concerns when you get to the last chapter he calls out two ladies in the church who are in conflict with one another and he calls them out about that by the way how would you like your name to be included in the Bible and read for 2,000 years for the reason of not being able to get along with someone um, but that's how important unity was that they were called out specifically so here in this first verse in uh, chapter 2, he goes through this sort of rhetorical list of questions. He says, therefore, if there's any encouragement from being in Christ, if any comfort of his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, all of those ifs right there are not if maybes. They're if surely you see this in your life. If you are a true, authentic believer, you know these things are true. If you see this, then, he says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, uh, like-minded, having the same love, one in spirit, one in mind. In other words, I think he's calling us out as readers. He's calling the people of this church out to say, hey, if you really are authentic, you know all this stuff um, you see that, that Jesus has done in your life then it ought to express itself by you being like-minded with the other people around you that Jesus loves, the people around you that Jesus has called uh, to be his followers, co-followers with you, the people that he has made a part of this family together with you. There's got to be unity. If you are real and authentic, you've got to be, as he says, like-minded, having the same love, one in spirit and one in mind. Now, we're, we're not all like-minded in the sense that we all agree on all the same things. We certainly don't agree, I don't know, politically or about <laughs> sports teams or I don't know, a lot of things that we could think of in this culture, in this society that we may not agree on. But we have a lot of sameness about ourselves when it comes to uh, what is priority in our life, who we love and who we serve. We are the same in all of these areas. The areas that we differ in are not as important as the areas where we are the same. And so we need to find that unity and let it be super important to us. It was important to Jesus. It was important to the disciple John. It's important to the apostle Paul. It should be very important to us. We should live uh, as though unity were our priority and we should work at it. 
you would think because we are all believers and we uh, are part of the church that the nicest people are there and we should all get along. But you know the truth is that we struggle to get along because we're imperfect. And because when we step outside of the leading of the Holy Spirit and we walk in fleshly ways, we are going to rub one another the wrong way. I know I find that's true uh, in my life. There are people within the church that rub me the wrong way. And to be honest, there are people in the church that I rub the wrong way. I know I'm a, a part of the, that equation on the wrong side often. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit lives within us, and He makes us one. And so we should endeavor to walk in the Holy Spirit and experience this unity that we're being called to. All right, how do we do that? Verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. That's really hard. Let's break that down real quick. He says two don'ts and one do. The don'ts are don't uh, have selfish ambition. Um, so ambition in America, we think of that as a really great word. You know, I'm, I'm going to work hard toward a goal. But when you throw the word selfish in it, that's totally the wrong goal for us as believers. When we are focused on ourselves, then our ambition to make ourselves happy, or make ourselves powerful, or make ourselves number one is leading us in the wrong direction, and it's going to lead against unity in the church. Because when we focus on our self interest, we're all the time going to have those self interests overlap in a bad way with the people around us. At the beginning of this choir talks, I referenced social media. And, you know, sometimes that's the way we are in life is that we are promoters of ourselves. And I want us just to see that and think about that for just a second. Uh, so we shouldn't have selfish ambition or, number two, vain conceit. We shouldn't think of ourselves so highly. And the word vain to me is, me means useless. It's of no value to think about yourself in this inflated way. Um, these, are, these are our don'ts here. These things work against unity. When we're focused on ourselves and we're focused on our own selfish ambition, we are going to rub people the wrong way. We're going to do the wrong things in relationship to other people, and we're going to create disunity in the church. So often, I think, in our society, we hear things like, just do what makes you happy. You've got to do the things in life that make you happy. Uh, but that's not what the Apostle Paul is saying here in Philippians. He's really going to tell us the opposite, that when we seek out our own happiness in life, we become so self-focused that we lose the joy that Jesus has for us along the way. Because here's the truth. Joy doesn't come from seeking out our own interest and our own happiness. Those things are a byproduct of us seeking out what Jesus wants us to do and seeking out to meet the needs of other people. So here's the do, okay? Two don'ts. Don't be selfish ambition. Don't uh, have vain conceit. Here's the do. In humility, value others above yourself. Boy, that's really challenging. That doesn't even sound right in uh, 2021 America here. Value others above yourself. We're often so worried about how others value us and how others see us. But Paul says we've got to flip the script and look and value others above ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean that we should think badly about ourselves. That doesn't jive with um, the, what we see in Scripture. We should think about ourselves in the way that, that God thinks about us, that we are highly valued. Uh, we are people that he valued so much that he, he sent his only son to pay the price so that we can be a part of his family. He doesn't want us to feel badly about ourselves, but he wants us to value the needs of other people over our needs, to let our ambitions be towards meeting the needs of other people to let our thoughts not be conceited and thinking about our own greatness, but about the greatness that is implanted in the people that he put around us. Value others above yourself. Skipping down a little bit, he gives us the great example, which is Jesus. Here's what he says about Jesus. Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Now he's talking about when Jesus, before Jesus came to earth, uh, before he was born in a manger, that he existed in heaven, uh, 
at the right hand of the Father, and that all of the, the heavenly creatures surrounded him 24-7 to praise him, to worship him. He had all the power in the universe there at his disposal. And what he did in verse 7, rather, he made himself nothing. He emptied himself. Uh, this is the opposite of selfish ambition. His ambition was to give up everything that pointed to him and come to do the will of the Father, even though it took him out of the highest place possible and put him in a little backcountry town in a manger uh, born to poor people. It's, a, it's an amazing what he did, and it's the opposite of selfish ambition. It's the opposite of vain conceit. He left uh, the adoration of all of heaven, all of those beings always giving him worship, and he came where no one knew him. He came where uh, no one would recognize him. Uh, Jesus is our great example, and he valued others more than himself. His whole mission here on earth was not for his glory, not for his fame, not for his comfort. His whole mission here on earth was to give his life, to be crucified on a cross for sinners, for people who didn't deserve it, for the very people who nailed him to the cross, and for you and for, for me. Have this mind in yourself which is in Christ Jesus. That's, that's the encouragement that he gives us here in verse 5. Are we there? Am I there? Are you there? Can we be the person like Jesus who sacrifices and is unselfish to give our lives because there's great joy in doing that and being a part of that mission? Thanks for sharing with me today. 